Hello and welcome to another session. Today we're going to focus on positioning. More importantly, we're going to focus on correct positioning for your business, for your product, for your service, for your personal service. Why? Because most businesses have either the wrong positioning or no positioning. And with the wrong positioning, you telegraph a totally opposite message than you want to your market. With no positioning, you are no different than any other commodity in the category, and so you have no distinction, no differentiation, no advantage, no benefit. So let's start with what the positioning is intended on doing and being for you. It is the defining differential. It is the meaningful advantage. It is the reason why your target audience, your prospective buyers, will want to buy from you instead of your competition, will want to buy from you instead of the alternative choices, would want to buy from you instead of doing nothing. Now, there are many different positioning approaches that can be taken. But it all boils down to being preeminent. We're going to discuss preeminent in a little a while, but right now what you have to know is that whether you're extraordinarily exclusive and expensive or amazingly inexpensive and the best bargain in the whole marketplace, you have to be able to define, you have to be able to differentiate, you have to be able to describe, you have to be able to contrast and compare the reason why. I think in previous discussions, I have shared with you how critical the phrase reason why is to everything you do. Because if you can't tell me as your prospective buyer, the reason why I should buy your product or I should favor your company or I should deal with you personally of your personal services, I'm not going to be motivated to do that and you'll only prosper accidentally, meaning you'll probably do mediocre, which is totally undeserved because I'm going to explain now exactly, precisely, and wonderfully clearly how you can position yourself for maximum and total success. First of all, what is positioning? Positioning is the totally integrated message that you send out and that your product and your people and your business conveys and communicates to the market. It is not just a bunch of words. It is a way of being, and you have to decide what are you intended or designed to be to the market. Because until you know what you are and what perception you want them to gain and what fulfillment of that perception you want to be able to project and deliver, you can't create a positioning. So we start by saying what you are and what you are not. You have to do what I call a self-reality check. You look at your business as it either is if it's operating or as it should be once it is operating and successful. You decide very clearly who is the market you are going to serve and who is not. It's equally important to know who you don't want or who you're not going to serve because you can't be all things to all people. When you try to do that, you dilute and water down your message. And a watered down message is a non-effective message. So decide first, who do you want to be reaching? Now you've got to say why. And there's got to be congruency. If you want the elite people but your product isn't right for them, just because you want them doesn't mean you can fulfill their perception. If you want 
middle market and you want to be the best value in the middle price, you've got to be able to understand who you're targeting. And then you've got to have what's called message to market. Your message has to convey to the right market the value you represent, the benefit they will gain from dealing with you, the advantage you, you represent and will provide above and beyond other choices. Now, the good news here is what I'm getting into here and what I'm explaining are universal principles. It doesn't matter if you're going to be very elite and be selling a, um, a very high-priced product or service or you're going to, whether you're selling Rolls Royces or whether you're selling uh, entry-level Toyotas, you figure out the market you're serving and then you figure out how, why, and make sure that you can so it's the that your business can deliver on whatever positioning promise you decide to stand by. So once you figure out, I want this market, and I want them to see my business as representing this advantage, and advantage is very relative. By that I mean you can be a very modestly priced product or service, and have great advantage over no extra options. It's a very simple product. You can manufacture it more uh, cost effectively, but you have to be able to have me as the buyer see before I will seize whatever you are offering. You have to see what it is that makes your company, I say, product, service, or you as a person, because if you're a personal service provider, you are the product and service. So. Positioning, it entails or represents a combination of things. First of all, the value proposition that you build your entire business upon or whatever product or service you've got. You can have multiple positions for multiple products, services, or businesses, but you have to have one position for whatever product, service, business, or professional service you're selling. And that position has to be very clear. For example, my position was always when I started, I basically find overlooked assets, hidden opportunities, underperforming activities, underutilized profit sources within and outside a company. I turn them into windfall and then ongoing revenue, and I only get paid out of the results and the windfall profits I produce. It was a very, 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 very compelling proposition against people who wanted to be paid big fees and didn't have any promise. I promised to deliver on a desired outcome, which to my clients was more profits, newfound profits, windfall profits. Anyhow, you got to figure out what your proposition is. In your workbook, there are pages that show you how to work on your unique selling proposition, how to figure out what positioning is best for you. But the first thing I suggest you do is study your direct, your indirect competition. Let me explain. If you're selling a, let's call it a uh, supplement, it's an easy example, that, that you, people would take for weight loss. You would study everyone else selling supplements for weight loss. How would you study them? You'd see their ads, you would look at their, at their uh, websites, you would look at their positionings, you'd look at their value propositions, you'd look at uh, their copy, you'd look at their claims, and you would look for two reasons. One, if you are no better than they and there's no advantage, you can't really expect to sell a lot more people. You've got to see where there are voids, where there are gaps, or you also can look at indirect competition. What does that mean? Well, let's use the example of selling a supplement that you swallow for weight loss. You're not just competing with other supplements you swallow. If somebody wants weight loss, you're competing with exercise equipment, personal trainers, gyms, books, what else, uh, health clubs, uh, portion food providers, and I would study all the things they do, the copy they use, the positionings they use, 
the uh, what I call hot buttons, which means the uh, PowerPoints they focus on. And I would see, number one, where there might be a void that your product service company or you yourself, if you're a personal service provider, could provide. Number two, I would see if I could borrow success processes from a non-direct competitor and use the same kind of an approach or position for your product. Again, like maybe someone's doing a great job positioning themselves as a personal trainer and you could modify and uh, model what they did in personal training for your supplement business. But you have to figure out what you stand for. Why is your supplement a great value? And there's many ways you can do it. As I said, you, you can be taking the high road, the low road, the middle road. Whatever road or path you take to the market you want to address, you have to first know yourself what you can deliver. And then you've got to, de you've got to define, you have to dimensionalize, you have to um, develop in the mind of the prospect the value that you represent. How do you do that? You do it many ways. First way is by what I call dividing and conquering. It's a very powerful process you can use in all your marketing, you can use in your selling approaches, you can use in your um, your advertising and basically the position is not to belittle or uh, or disrespect any competitor but to separate yourself from the rest of the pack. The one way to do it that is most effective is to say there are a lot of people in the market offering or selling X, whatever you're marketing. And there, most of them are fine people, good people, I think honest people, but none of them are approaching the business or the product or the service or you, the client, the way we are, and then you define and you describe what's different about how you do it. And sometimes what's different is merely telling them. There's a concept called preemptive marketing, and preemptive marketing goes back, I think I told earlier the Schlitz beer story where the man who helped uh, a company go from number 10 in the market to number one in six months merely told the entire story of how beer was made because no one had ever told that story to the consumer. All beer was made the way Schlitz explained that they made their beer, but Schlitz was the first company to explain it and they got full credit. So you might merely tell people what you do and how you create your product or how you select your product or how you support your product or how you um, back up your product or how you got into the business and the love you've got for what the product or service or the category does and define yourself that way. There's a whole nother dimension and we talked a bit I think in an earlier module, if not we'll talk in another one, about being a maven and there is another section in your workbook that very methodically goes through all the different stages and steps you can go through to define your own personality within your company so that you raise yourself and your stature in the market to that of a personality, almost a celebrity, almost an icon. Back to positioning. So first, you've got to figure out what market you're after. Second, you've got to figure out what it is about you that you can express more powerfully more clearly, more desirably than your competitors, direct and indirect, to gain the attention first and then the response and then the purchase and hopefully the sustaining ongoing business of the market you are after. Different markets respond to different things. A buyer of something very modestly priced is not going to respond to the same proposition, the same benefits, the same uh, copy or the same approach as somebody who's buying a very, very uh, expensive and elite high fashion type product or, or a super expensive and exclusive product. 
So you have to figure out who your market is. You got to figure out what it is about you that is defining, and then you got to figure out how to convey it. And the easiest, best way is to study everything out there. You can also study all of the discussion groups. You can study all of the complaint uh, websites and see what people like and dislike about other products because when people are passionate, they express very powerful uh, word phrases from their heart and their mind and their subconscious that can be copy you can use to position yourself. I always suggest that everybody entering into any business or buying any business or developing a new division or profit center for an existing business, go and look up all the books that are published on anything related to the product, service, or kind of business and look at the titles because titles and subtitles are normally what sell books. And if you see titles and subtitles, it'll give you great positioning copy you can borrow. Next, I have them look at the reviews of those books. And they're looking for the positive and they're looking for the negative. Why? Because when people are exhilarated and happy and got a lot out of it, they say things that are very powerful that can be used in your copy for saying it about your product or service. When they're angry or dissatisfied or disappointed, they say things also that are very powerful. And you can use both. You can say, we created this product or our company because we knew people wanted this. And you say all the good things people say about uh, what they got. This can be copy from books, copy from the discussion, copy about people that loved or hated somebody else's product or service or a related product or service. But it gives you language. It gives you copy. It gives you a way to speak directly and precisely to the heart and the soul and the mind um, and the, the mindset of the market you're after. So once you come up with the positioning, then you have to incorporate it in all of your integrative activities. That means your marketing. That means the way you conduct yourself interactively, whether they're salespeople, whether they're telephone people, whether they're salespeople in a retail store, whether they're clerks behind a counter or servers in a restaurant at a table. You have to be congruent with whatever your positioning is. All of your messaging has to be in alignment. Your conduct has to be in alignment. If you promise an exhilarating and a, def and a, a redefining, just wondrous experience, and they come to your company or they come to your restaurant or they come to your um, service uh, company and they have a terrible experience because no one is respectful, everyone is different, there's not any uniform vision or um, business culture that is driving it, it will fail. So positioning is not just a, a uh, abstract word. Positioning is a thread that runs throughout everything you do. So once you figure what your positioning is, you have to be uh, fanatical about making sure all your conduct, communication, uh, um, and, and consideration of everyone you deal with is congruent with that. And that means your ads have to say that. The way you, you uh, deliver on your promise has to be consistent. The way your people communicate and deal with their their um, their audience, the market, their prospects has to be congruent. Everything has to be congruent. And when you do that, you stand out. And it doesn't matter whether you're selling something inexpensive, something very expensive, selling the masses, selling the same thing as everybody else. If you're selling the same thing as everybody else, you've got to make the company, you've got to make yourself the hero of the audience because if not, you have no advantage. If you're selling something unique that you created, you've got to make the fact that you went to great efforts to create something superior or something more economical. But whatever it is, you've got to be able, it all boils down to the story you're telling. 
All of life is a theater. And we are all actors, whether we know it or not. And we are telling stories, not fake stories, but we're telling stories that are a continuation in our lives, in our business lives. And the story you tell is the story you sell, and it's the story that you support, and it becomes the story of your business life. So I'm going to stop there and uh, give you a moment to reflect on this, and I'm going to suggest that you go to your workbook, and you quickly write down, and when we're done with the total session, you spend more time, but you review unique selling proposition, you review uh, Maven Marketing, and you also make a point when we are done to check out all the competition, direct, indirect, all the books, all the discussion groups, and see where there are gaps and see where there are language patterns and uh, segments you can borrow and see what you can model and get clear on who you are and who you're not and what your business is going to stand for and why and be able to explain that to your market. Take a five-minute review and then we'll continue.